Hi, my name is Daniel Flood. I'm technical lead at Animal Logic Academy. Um, in this video, we're just going to do a quick demonstration of our workflow using Pixar's USD Maya plugin. Um, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create a set at an asset level and we're going to use Pixar's uh, scene assembly workflow to reference in set pieces and build a set. Uh, then we're going to publish that asset level set. Then we're going to reference that into a layout shot and we're going to store some um, shot overrides on that set. Um, so let's get started. So first off we use our shotgun menu and from there we have customized the load behavior. So I'm just navigating towards an asset that I'm trying to find. So building 01 is the model that I'm after. So we've customized the behavior of this right hand panel. You can see when I click on action, there's reference USD into scene. And here we go. So let's focus that. So strictly speaking, this isn't really a reference. So if I go to the reference editor, you'll notice there's no references. Um, so this node type is made by Pixar as part of the plugin. So it's a Pixar USD reference assembly. So let's build up some more components for our set that we're going to build. So let's go back to that GUI. Let's build in a ground plane. Okay, so I've brought a few different set pieces into our set here. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly move them around. Um, there you go. So that's the basis of a very crude set for this demonstration. Um, so each of these nodes in the outline, you can see the USD file path attribute is referencing um, a USD file. So you can see that's a full file path in Linux. And if we go to the end, you can see it's ending in a .usd. So this is just a regular file path. So that covers how we load USD set pieces into Maya using our customization of Shotgun Toolkit. I'll just show you the manual way to do it. So just go to the Create menu, Scene Assembly, and select USD Reference Assembly. And then you get a Pixar USD reference assembly node. And then you have a file path attribute on that. So you can just click on the folder icon and select the set piece you want to load. Um, the representation of this will come in by default with no active representation. So this is um, not really USD. This is specific to my scene assembly workflow. So we just need to right click and go scene assembly and select one of the representations. So for this, we just want collapsed. And that's going to load. And there we go. So that's how you would load these in manually if you were not using Shotgun Toolkit. Um, okay, so we've built these into a rough set. Um, let's just duplicate these buildings a few times so we have a bit more stuff. There we go. This is just a bit of an attempt to make this sort of interesting. There we go. So we're going to group all these under a single transform. Let's give that the name of the set. I think that will get renamed when we publish anyway, but that doesn't matter too much. Um, let's group some buildings. So let's group those. Uh, there we go. So um, at this point, that sort of serves the rough illustration of how we build a set. Um, now I'm going to jump forwards and open up an actually fully built set because um, as you can see this is a pretty pretty basic example and it's probably better at this point to cut to one that we prepared earlier. Okay here is an example of a pre-built uh, set which was made by one of our students. Um, so a few things that are interesting here. So you can see obviously there's a lot more stuff going on in this set. There's a lot more buildings. This is actually laid out in a way that's useful for a shot. Um, you can look in the hierarchy in the left-hand side and you can see there's quite a lot of transforms. So we're grouping buildings by, you know, 
it's sort of at the discretion of the modeler how they want to group things. Um, and each of these um, ends with a uh, Pixar USD reference assembly node at the end. Um, just a kind of little point of interest with how those nodes work. If I select one of these buildings and focus on them, you'll notice that I can't select any subcomponents. And if I hit F in the outliner, um, I'm just getting a single node. Um, this is how the Myers scene assembly workflow works essentially. So at the moment we're seeing the collapsed representation. So if I right click on this and go scene assembly, you can see collapsed is active. Um, if I change that to expanded, then I can see the regular um, hierarchy of that model. And so then I can select on specific um, bits of geometry, um, which is you know, interesting. So you, you can you know, change that to expanded, hit F to focus and dolly around and then change the representation back to uh, collapsed. I think um, when we're building sets, it's actually a pretty nifty feature to have these coming in as collapsed because um, a classic problem with building sets is someone does like a marquee selection in the viewport and they select part of the geometry and not the top level transform and assets can get torn apart. So it's a kind of nice little feature, I think, of the workflow that, um, you know, with a collapsed representation, it's impossible to select anything except the top level transform. Um, so this is not my set. This was made by one of our students. Um, but let's, as an example, just go through the process of publishing this in Shotgun. So I select the top level node and go Shotgun Publisher. Um, then I'll take a screen capture. And then add a comment. Um, and then I would hit publish. I'm not actually going to publish it. Um, so when that gets published, a few interesting things happen. Um, when we referenced in the USD set pieces, we referenced them in using a file path. Um, that's obviously just like a regular you know, Linux or Windows file path. Um, when these things get published, we have some code that runs through all of the file path attributes in the USD Maya, sorry, the USD reference assembly nodes, and it replaces the file paths with a URI. Um, just to give an example of what this URI looks like, there we go. So I'm not going to discuss this at great length because this is covered in quite a bit of detail in other videos. But essentially what we're doing here is instead of referring to a set piece by a file path, we're using this query to tank essentially. Um, and the way that Maya gets the correct set piece is through our um, USD AR resolver plugin. Um, if you want to know more about that, watch video three in the series. Um, but essentially this, after we publish our set, um, all the file paths get replaced with URIs before being published. So that covers how we publish USD sets using our customization of Shotgun Toolkit. Um, to see how, we how you would do it manually, this is how you do it. So we select the top level transform, go to File, Export Selection, set the export type to Pixar USD Export. Um, we just want to make sure animation is turned off. We've got export instances turned on. I'm just going to save this into the temp folder. So let's just look really quickly at the USD file that created. Um, okay, so I've just used USD cat to look at the contents of the USD file. Um, so obviously it's a lot of text, but essentially what jumps out is there's no vertex information here. This is just a series of references with transforms on them. Um, let's look at what this looks like in USD view because this USD set should be visible in any um, application with a plugin to support it. There we go. So this is the same set loaded in USD view. So that USD document can be opened in uh, Maya, Houdini, Katana, or USD view. Um, the next thing we're going to show is how we would go about bringing one of these into a shot layout and how we can set some overrides on that.
Okay, so this is um, the very beginning of a layout for a particular shot. So in the same way that we referenced in set pieces, we're now going to reference in a set. So here I'm selecting the actual set itself as a version asset. So the versioning of the sets is obviously distinct from the set pieces that compose it. So your set may have many different set pieces. They have their own version stream. And the set really is just storing of which assets are in the set and their location and their transformation, rotation, and scale. And then the set itself is versioned um, as an asset. So I'm going to open version 21 because that's the latest. And there you go. So in much the same way that we were able to reference in a USD set piece, we've referenced in a USD set. And again, it comes in as a Pixar USD reference assembly node. And again, by default, the representation through the scene assembly is collapsed. So if I click on this, it's just selecting everything. Um, so if I was a layered artist, I'd need to change this representation. So let's right click, go scene assembly and expand it. There's a little bug, which we've got a little fix for. We'll talk about that in more detail later, but here we go. So now we can select individual components which is what we want. Um, this level of representation is good for us because, uh, like I said, it's a good thing that when I marquee selecting the viewport, that it's selecting the top level transform of this asset because otherwise assets can get torn apart. Um, so that's how you would start off on a layout task. Um, to show the um, per shot override workflow, I'm going to open up the actual proper layout that one of our students has done because that has a camera information which will make it a bit more interesting. Okay, so here we're looking at the actual layout for this shot done by one of our students. Um, so there's a camera pan to the right hand side here. Um, all of the positions of these buildings is set at the global level set. Um, and that set is used by many shots. However, we have the ability to set a per shot override for locations of um, set pieces. So let's just say for argument's sake, um, Let's say this building back here, we wanted to push it back a little bit or have it closer to this building on its left hand side, just in this one shot. So let's find that here. So just for argument's sake, imagine that the location of where that building was was necessary for most shots, but for just say for this particular one shot, we wanted to push it back like that so it's flush with this building. Um, when we go to publish this through Shotgun, um, essentially all it's going to store is that override information. Um, that lets us kind of customize, take, it lets us take a global level set and then customize it on a per shot basis. Um, that's a very efficient workflow because essentially you put as much effort into the global level set as you can and then you know where necessary you can make little tweaks per shot. Um, if you want the details of how that works and what it looks like in terms of the USD document, check out video two of this sequence. Uh, where Wen covers that in detail. Um, that essentially is the conclusion of our introduction to our USD Maya workflow. Um, I hope you found that interesting and please stay tuned for the next video.